Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week three of Monday, of Tuesday Night Smackdown. Woo! <laughs> I'm caught up. I'm all over the place. But right now we have Heath Slater and Rhino coming down to the ring. Now we got a special stipulation to this match here. Now if you remember over the past few weeks there, Heath Slater and Rhino, they lost their qualifying match to join the tag team finals or the tag team championship match at the Royal Rumble. That they did? Now, we have a special special match here. Heath Slater has been fighting for the team saying that they should be in that match that they earned a place and that they deserve a place. The man's got kids. He's got to support them, right? He got kids. And then a championship would really help that. So Golda said, Heath, if you want this, you need to beat your opponent this week on SmackDown and earn your team a shot. We who, don't know who that is. Who could that opponent be? That's my only question. Oh. That's not good. He's confident, though. He's saying, bring it. He's got Paul Heyman. Braun Strowman and Paul Heyman coming down to the ring here. Open up SmackDown. Is, All right. Is this Braun setting his flag, saying that SmackDown is his home? Or what? What is it? What's happening here? I'm not entirely sure, but I, if I have anything to say about it, I'm sure Paul Heyman is working something behind the scenes here. He gotta be. He's, if anybody knows this business, it's Paul Heyman and he knows what's best for his client. Now it's interesting to note that he's not with Brock Lesnar anymore. Oh, we, haven't even, we, we actually don't know what Brock Lesnar's doing, so we haven't seen him on either show so far, so I can only safely assume that he's not here, but at the same time we won't know as Braun being very vocal at the beginning of this match and knocking Heath straight to the floor. Oh, poor, poor Heath. Like, he, I don't, he couldn't have expected this. I, I'm not sure what Goldust is thinking here. Like, does he just not want Heath Slater and Rhino in that tag team championship match? I can maybe, just maybe, Goldust just kind of put out open words saying that he wanted an opponent for Heath Slater. Not one of his choosing. And maybe Paul Heyman stepped step forward. Up. Yeah, absolutely. He's the advocate after all. Like that could. I'm, I feel like that's probably what happened here because I don't think that Goldust is as sadistic or maniacal to make this match a thing. Like, look at this. Braun is knocking him down without any effort whatsoever. I don't think. I think Heath Slater has gotten one move in, and that was when he stopped Braun from attacking him in the corner with an elbow, which I feel like instinct just popped up. Please don't hurt me. Yeah, it probably wasn't an As offense. It was God. the best form of offense is a good defense type of situation here. Oh, Braun going for a swinging club there and missed, thankfully, because oh, Heath is just getting obliterated in this match. This needs to stop. This man has kids. He, he doesn't need this. Why why is Braun Strowman in this match? Oh, oh finally, yes. Heath Slater getting some Come offense. Come on, Heath. Come Let's on, go. Heath, fight for it. You can do it. Shouldn't be biased, but you gotta root for a man that just loves his He loves his family. family. He, he he just wants the championship gold so we can get the pay increase so we can support his family. And it seems like right there, Heath Slater was completely shocked that he was even able to get the upper hand on Braun and that all of his offense didn't even do much as Braun just obliterated him once more. Wrenching on the shoulder muscles there, almost rendering his arm useless. Remember, Heath Slater's big finisher is a DDT. If he can't grip that head properly, he's not gonna get that move off. Oh my God, the monster among men is just destroying Heath Slater. Rhino is just on the outside. You gotta remember there is a little bit of conflict between this team right now. Oh, big ass boots from Braun Strowman as he shouts <laughs> aggression. Oh, as he turns his attention to Rhino. Uh, nope. Never mind. He's going right back to Heath. He's just telling Rhino that this is over for you. You're not getting your chance. That is Ryan that's power not slam good. And the pin, I think it's over. To be fair, the moment I saw Braun come out, I didn't think he had much of a chance. Either way, Heath Slater did what he could. He tried his best here, that's but... Another clip of that big boot, knocking Heath Slater out cold. Leading to this move. A devastating running power slam. As oh. Braun Strowman looking defiantly into the camera. Saying, there's no place that can hold me. 
when you're facing this monster, what do you even do? I, I, I would be terrified to step into the ring. Getting ready to leave. What, what's Rhino doing here? I hope. No! Rhino, no! What? Oh, Braun. Oh, good. This this is a good side of Braun. I don't know what is going on with Rhino here right now, but Braun's saying none of that. Like, there, there's no side of Braun Strowman that wants to see an unprovoked attack like that, especially for two people who should be teammates. What We're seeing on another side of Rhino. We saw it last week when the two men kind of stared down in the ring and Rhino gave that vibe of, of distaste towards Heath Slater after losing their, their I, opportunity. I don't like seeing what we're seeing from Rhino, but it happens sometimes. Tag teams fall apart here. Sometimes you just can't trust your opponent the way that you think you do. I just wish them the best, and I, I really hope that Heath Slater gets out on top of this. And maybe he can mend the bridge. Maybe. But we got Samoa Joe making his way to the ring yeah, right now. On the subject of untrustworthy people, Samoa Joe. <sighs> yep. Probably one of the people that will stab you in the back as soon as he possibly needs to, as soon as he possibly can to take whatever advantage that he can get. And we're continuing. That tournament, I believe, to the crown the WWE Champion. So, uh, I think he's going to take every single opportunity that he can possibly... Good thing you bring that up there, Astra. We got Samoa Joe. He is a good competitor there. So, we'll just have to see who his opponent is. It's Kane. It's Kane. Isn't... Isn't Kane... Maybe a different Kane? Samoa Joe doesn't seem to care. He's just leaning on the ropes. Well, I, mean, I would be trembling in my boots. As far as Samoa, no, that's that's that that's Kane. That's straight up Kane. What is last we heard? It was a mayor of Knoxville County, Tennessee. As he's back wrestling in his original gear. Very interesting here. Very very interesting. We are. About to get this underway. I, I don't... What does this mean for Knoxville County, Tennessee? Like, I, I don't know. What happened to bring him back here? I I don't like this. I feel like there's something sinister at play here. And I'm very worried. I think we all should be. Because the big red machine is back. Oh, no. Doesn't bode well for Samoa Joe. Or it doesn't bode well for Kane, I'm not too sure. Samoa Joe isn't phased at all. No, he just, let's go, let's bring it. I've, maybe he's watched plenty of Kane matches in the past and understands what he needs to do as he ducks under that clothesline. He must have. We'll see what uh, type of offense here Joe is going to try to get against Kane here. He's known as a fairly hard hitter and submission specialist, but Kane is, Kane is a big, strong boy. Samoa Joe going for a couple of strikes here, but missing wildly. Hits him with a double axe handle, and then gets flipped over the top rope as Kane summons the Paul Bearer. I'm... I'm shocked here, Astro. I didn't expect to see Kane here tonight. Or on SmackDown at all. He had his duties as mayor. So I don't know what brought him back to wrestling. Hopefully we'll hear some more, some confirmation later on. I hope so as well, because it's a terrifying sight. Uh, honestly, seeing the Big Red Machine back in action, and I, I need to do a little bit of research, so just bear with me, if you could call the action for a minute. And, I'll uh, do my darndest, but uh, that's normally not that good. No, it's, it's definitely it's definitely pretty great. You're, just, you're too hard on yourself. That I am. Either way, Kane got Samoa Joe down on the mat here. Had a little bit of offense going there, but Samoa quickly reversed it and starts just stomping on him. Showing him that he's not afraid of him. Kane does not care. He's resilient. He's strong. He is well versed in just this whole thing. But Samojo still unflinching in the face of a true monster that is Kane. Some beautiful backhands and punches there. Anyway, that was. I've just done my research and it turns out there was a massive electrical fire in the town hall of Knoxville. Are we sure it was an electrical fire here? That's what the report says. But the only thing that's slightly suspicious 
is the mayor was nowhere to be found. All people in the building were accounted for except the mayor. Well, I guess we found him. I... He's gone back to his old ways, I guess. I guess so. It's, uh, oh my god, a Samoa Joe charges at him with a clothesline, and Kane catches him and just throws him in the ropes, uncaring, unflinching, unafraid. This is, this is basically two monsters squaring off the ring here. Beautiful sidewalk slam from Kane, signature sidewalk slam. That is one of the best moves in the business, one of my favorite moves. The simplicity of a sidewalk slam, I adore it. I think it looks beautiful, and it looks devastating. And Kane knows how to do it. And he does. Here we go, going for the choke slam, hoping to put away Samoa Joe here. Our production team doing spot on, grade A job once again as we get a great view of the referees. But oh man, that's a nice look. See that choke slam. But Samoa Joe kicked out, probably because he knew that the camera was uh, not a good angle right there, and he wanted it to be a good shot. See Samoa Joe looking out for our shoddy production. Absolutely, as we see, Kane has gotten a lot of the offense in on this match. As now Samoa Joe is turning it around with a beautiful drop kick. Didn't knock Kane down though, as now he picks him up for a beautiful suplex. Slamming him down to the ring, but I'm still very concerned about why Kane is here. I'm not too sure. Either way, he's here. We need to accept that because beautiful, there's uh, Shining Wizard there from, from Samoa Joe. Sorry to cut you off. It's all good. It's just calling the action here. There's little that we can do to make Kane do something that Kane doesn't want to do. So. I don't know. Question is, did he contact Goldust, or did he just show up? I got nothing, Astro. I am shocked and flabbergasted. From now, I'm just trying to focus on the match here as Samoa Joe. It's a beautiful Uranagi. That it is. And now he's going for it. Is he going for the Kokina? No. He's instead going to go for what I can only presume is the Muscle Buster. Oh my, hoping to put away Kane with the Muscle Buster is a uh, interesting thought here for sure. Is he going for it? No, it looks like he's going for something a little bigger. Uh, a big. super... Oh my... Whoa. <laughs> that was not a superplex, that was an avalanche falcon arrow, my friend. That was a beautiful move from Samoa Joe there. A very, very interesting to see him pull that out against Kane. Almost... Looked like he was going for a sidewalk slam there himself, but caught him instead with a backbreaker. That was actually insane. Remember, Kane had all the offense kicking off this match, and now all of a sudden Samoa Joe has just snapped. Samoa Joe has turned the tables here. He bided his time, and that's the thing. Kane is old. He's worn down. Samoa Joe still has a lot of years. And it looks like now, now he's going for the it. muscle buster. Here we go. That's a big man to be carrying on your shoulders like that, Samoa Joe. Oh, there we go. He I want to chance Ultimate Muscle right now because that was a fantastic anime. But Samoa Joe. Coming away with the win. Beautiful muscle bu muscle buster. Wow, that's a tongue twister. Say that ten times fast. Nope. Can't say it once. No, me neither. Apparently. Uh, but beautiful match here from these two men. That I just, I'm still kind of thrown off that Kane was even in this match to begin with, but... We see a beautiful choke slam and, a, and went for the pin there, but Samoa Joe wise enough There's, to kick out. The thing is, you're seeing in the replays here that, for the most part, Kane had a lot of the advantage offensive, uh, offense wise, but then Samoa Joe just turned it around with the Uranagi, and just from then on, it was the end leading up to the Muscle Buster. Beautiful, beautiful match. One heck of a night, if you will. One. Yes. Here is your winner. Samoa Joe moves on to the next round of the tournament. Against the winner of the following match. Yes, so we know that the next match is, I'm assuming, the final first round appearance for all these uh, all these superstars. I guess it is. We still don't know who the other competitors are, but after this match here, we'll know them all. And that will lead to some exciting matches as I'm now seeing Vader make his way to the ring. Astra, you want to know what time it is? It's Vader time. It's Vader time! As he comes out wearing his traditional elephant demon mask thing. I love that helmet. It looks uh, 
completely beautiful. Looks very heavily inspired by H.R. Geiger, the artist who designed a lot of stuff for the Alien series as a whole. And it's it's beautiful. Almost love Craftian in his design there. I love it. I love it. And I'm so happy to see Vader making his return. Make the WWE return. programming. Last time we've seen him, I believe, was over seas in Japan. I'm not even too sure they're as for us. Vader has had a storied career there, but it didn't do too well in WWE. That's the thing. He came over here from overseas. He did WC time in WCW. He did time in Japan. And the thing is, he was a dominant, monstrous force, but never quite caught on in WWE. So I think that's bugged him all these years. Good to see Goldos giving him an opportunity here. That it is. So. Especially, he can take this tournament right from the bottom and go all the way to the top if he tries. If he tries, and uh, Vader is one heck of a fourth here, so it's going to be fun to see how Vader does against his next opponent. Or his first opponent, sorry. That is indeed his first opponent. And it's the animal, Batista. Oh, man. The one who walks alone. This is amazing. I can't believe I'm actually getting the call of this match right now. We just saw Kane and Samoa Joe battle it out. Samoa Joe obviously coming out with a win. But now we get to see an all-time legend up against the animal. It's still all about him. The movie star. Dave Batista. That he is. Just recently had a rather good movie come out of the theater there. Stuber, go see it if you haven't already. It was really enjoyable. Highly recommend it. So, Batista coming back deciding that he's not fully done with the WWE or maybe just wanted a little bit of extra pocket cash while he's waiting for uh, Guardians 3 to start filming. Who really knows? Who really knows? But, either way, I'm happy to see him wrestling again. He was one of my all-time favorites prior to his uh, departure into the movie industry. He is incredible, but the thing is, I love seeing him wrestle. I love seeing him in movies. I, apparently, I just love seeing Batista. Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. He's recently announced, however, that he will never step foot in the ring again. You mean after this one? Well, yes, prior to, you know, Goldust talking when coming back. Yeah. Which this is good work on Goldust. The thing is, this is probably his last run there, so we'll see what happens with him as well. What a song. What? A guy. A song. A song is beautiful. That's probably the thing I'm going to miss the most. The well, thing is, you can just set it up on your creator just on repeat. Let's yeah. go. That's a good point. And then you won't walk alone inside this pit of danger. I'll walk with Batista. Oh. Oh. I don't know how Elias will feel about that. But that's neither here nor there. As the bell rings, we have two big boys squaring off here. Batista getting the upper hand right away. The crowd behind Batista entirely. As Vader says no with a beautiful slap to the face. and A little bit of back and forth here at the beginning. I like this. I like to see this between these two big men. Neither one can knock each other down. And there you go. One stiff forearm to the back. Sending Vader flat on his face. Vader saying no. Throwing him down too. Beautiful German suplex into the rope serve. Oh, that Batista's has head. Smacking off the ropes every single, like, layer. I, I, I that had oh. to hurt. That had to hurt. Vicious. But he's back up right away. Tom in the breaker. corner. He's going for it. And he hits the beautiful chop block and knocking Vader down. And that's the thing with Vader. He's a big man. you got to knock him to the ground. If you're going to do any significant offense, you got to take him off his feet. That you do. But the thing is, Vader is just as good at taking you off your feet and picking you up back on your feet. If he wants to, going for uh, a fall away reverse power bomb. At, it looked like he was going for the Batista bomb in a way, but he just let Batista keep going. Yep, and then he hits him with a beautiful clothesline and a couple of quick stomps after that. As he's showing Batista that you, you might be popular. But I'm, I'm a force to be reckoned with as he puts him into a beautiful camel clutch. He's just reminding Batista what time it is. That's all that he's doing. And it is still Vader time until Vader says it's not. Or until someone tells Vader it's over. Yeah, I don't know if he'll listen to him, though. We'll oh, be uh, honest. 
Yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. As we see Batista letting out his frustration, slamming Vader's head into the into the mat. That can't be good for Vader. As he does some little pops over Vader, almost insulting, like just jumping back and forth, saying, you know, shop sure. rope move. Big risk from Batista, slamming his knees into the ring. Sorry to cut you off. That's it. Maybe uh, Batista shouldn't be taunting as much as Vader goes to put him back into that camel clutch. Continue to work the head and the neck region there. So that's a... Uh, Remember, Batista did get thrown into the ropes from that initial German suplex. That he did, so uh, it's a good thing for Vader to focus. Yeah, Vader is Batista's being smart. Yeah, and Batista's kind of fumbling around here a little bit. A little bit of ring rust, if you will. That's the thing there. Oh, vicious clothesline from Vader there as he grabbed a dazed Batista going for the pinfall. Batista kicking out before one. It's very interesting to see that Batista still has the, the wherewithal to go for a big boot, and he just cannot get Vader off his feet. Vader, however, he knows what to do. Back up on his feet like that, multiple big boots trying to take Vader down, but not even able to get a single thing as Vader throws him into the corner. It gives him a little butt bounce. A little, little bit of a kishi there, and then a beautiful... Tosses uh, him. Uh, toss. Just uh, one call it a hip toss. Him nearly but... halfway across the ring. Ah, uh, more than halfway, I believe. Plastic. A big, strong boy like Vader throwing somebody around like Batista. That's that's impressive here. We should as... not see Vader going to the top, but it's signature moonsault time from Vader. A man that size hitting a moonsault like that. Count of two. Batista still in this match. He knows how to kick out. That's almost instinct at this point. He's had a storied career. Wrestled the greats. Such as The Undertaker, Triple H, Randy Orton, all of these big names. So, I, surely Vader is just another milestone on his list, uh, on his bucket list, sorry. But you saw there, Vader was trying to set Batista up for something here, but he quickly got, grabbed the upper hand and then threw Vader to the mat. Vader went for a clothesline to knock Batista off the rope, but he just came up a little bit short there. He missed entirely as he... Oh! Gets him for the Beautiful spine, spine buster. buster. That surely is a rope break. The ref may be paying attention to actually seeing that that was a rope break and stopping the count. Who really knows what even happened there? That surely, it looked to me like Vader's hand was underneath that rope, so... Not from this angle, of course. Can't really see it all, but the referee knows best. Sometimes. Allegedly. As Vader throwing Batista into the corner, is he going for the iconic Vader bomb here? And he is! That's surely it Ooh. for Batista right here. Think about that, nearly 400 pounds coming down on top of your midsection there. Vader walking away with the victory, moving on to the second round of this tournament. Next week is the go-home show before the Royal Rumble, don't forget. It's gonna be a good time. So we'll have... Undertaker versus Luke Harper and Samoa Joe against Vader to determine who faces each other for the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.